my mom was a superwoman, <laughs> full of life. Uh, there was nothing she couldn't do. She was a director in the federal ministry. She was a farmer. She could make soap. She could make a She could do anything. My mom was larger than life. She, she was boisterous. She was fun. You could hear her voice around the house. I see angels going up. I Losing her, you know, my family hasn't quite been the same, especially because um, of the way it happened. It was a plane crash. And truth is, she never liked to fly. So it seemed like a shock to everyone. Wait, don't tell me she's gone. And then it happened the way it did. And I remember speaking to her a day before the, cr the crash. She was in Paris, she was coming back from Paris and it was an adjoining flight from Lagos to Abuja. It was a Bellevue plane crash. And I spoke to her and I told her, Mom, when you come into Lagos, please stay, don't fly to Abuja. <laughs> and she said, no, 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 I miss your dad, I miss your siblings, I need to see them. I haven't seen them in like a month. I've been at work for the whole time. I need to see them. And the phone call ended and I said, I love you, Mom. And that was it. And the next day I was at work and my sister called me and said the plane hadn't landed. I'm like, what do you mean it hadn't landed? Now, I give that synopsis to, to drive home this point I'm about to make. Remember, I told her not to fly. You can't imagine the torture I felt days, weeks, and months. I felt that the Lord had maybe was giving me you know, direction as regards the flight, maybe I wasn't sensitive enough, maybe I should have known for sure, maybe I should have seen it, I should have known, I'm a Christian, I'm a, you know. So I carried that cross and I hung myself on it for a long, long time. I felt responsible, I felt like I had um, been given this knowledge and I had abused it, I felt that um, I just blamed myself for so many things. But on the flip side, I told her I loved her. That was the last thing I ever told her. It gave me the confidence and the peace, knowing that, you know, I figured that I was right with her and she was right with me. And she seemed so happy with me towards the end. She said, Gloria, I'm so proud of you. You know, because I told her she ran, an, I ran an errand for her. And she was like, wow, how could you have done that? That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. It made me realize that every moment you have with someone, anyone in your space, in your sphere, in your sphere of influence, uh, you make every moment lasting because you really do not know <laughs> the moments, the times you have, the seasons you have with that person. How would it have been if I had fought with her, you know, towards the end? How would I have felt? It made me more sensitive and more aware of the fact that each time we have with anyone is precious and we have to consider it so. We have to validate each other. We've got to remind each other of what we have and what, what we are. I struggled so much. And I, I, I practically told myself I, I wasn't going to serve the Lord. <laughs> because I figured, how could you disappoint me so? How could you do this to me? How dare you, God? I'm very expressive and um, it reflects also my relationship with God. And the Lord knew that I was struggling. And so one day, um, I had a nap in my pastor, a good heart, Akwema's house. In fact, they came to whisk me because I wasn't sleeping. I was you know, an auto, auto, automated robot, making sure everybody was fine, wearing a bubua, making sure everybody was eating and being, you know, like a mother hen, trying to take away, you know, not take bread, take attention at all, you know, with my grief. But I was giving, giving and giving, giving so that, you know, I would not have to deal with my grief. And my pastor and his wife were watching me through the days and through the weeks and realized, okay, they just whisked me off one day and took me to their house and said, Sit down there. I'm like, what? <laughs> Sleep. You haven't been sleeping. Because I'd wait till everybody was gone to bed, and would have gone to bed, and then I'll go into my father's garden and just pick a, pick a towel and wail out in the open skies. And wail, and there's no one to hear me cry. And then before I know it, it's 4 a.m., and then I'm up again, doing the same thing I was doing. So they noticed I hadn't been resting. And... I slept off on that couch and I had an open vision and I saw a plane and I saw my mom in that plane and I saw that she was sitting next to a pastor because I saw a collar and I saw her hairstyle. She had, you know, braids like wet and wavy and I figured, oh, this is strange and she was wearing a white cardigan and I asked her hairstylist, 
you know, what kind of style did you make for her before she traveled? And she said, wet and wavy, wet and wavy. And I'm like, oh my goodness, does that mean this dream is real? And I saw clearly that I went through her mind and I saw all the things she was thinking of when the plane started to stutter and shake. And I saw that she was thinking about me, my siblings, as usual, a woman always, you know, looks out for her family, even in the worst of times. Can you imagine that? So she kept, kept showing like flashes of light, pow, 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 like that. And she centered and focused on all of us. And she was particularly focused on my baby brother. And then she realized, she shrugged and she realized, why should I care about the living when I'm going to meet my maker? I actually heard her say that. And then she, she made a prayer, a simple prayer. She said, into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Lord Jesus, receive my soul. Immediately she said that prayer, I saw a ball of light, like a huge bulb, you know, leave her body. And I could see the huge beaming light. And then it moved up and went up like a ball through the roof of the plane. And you know, like you're watching the movies like Star Wars and the rest of them. The sky, you know, had all the streaks of light and it was like a spaceship in the sky. And the sky received that ball of light and it went through the clouds and then immediately it went through the clouds, pow, it closed. And immediately that happened, the plane went down and crashed and I saw fire and I woke up screaming. But before I woke up, I heard a voice clearly say, for she did not suffer death. I took her home before the plane went down. Now, I woke up screaming and crying because I could no longer hold anything against God. <laughs> I couldn't. I fought it, I tried, but I couldn't. God was reassuring me that in spite of the devastating kind of accident that it was, in spite of the fact that we had no body to bury, because uh, when it was time for burial, we did not know what to do, whether to get an empty casket and put her personal belongings in it. And there were, you know, family meetings. Should we do this? Should we not do that? And we said, there's no point. There's nobody to bury. So we don't bury anything because um, we didn't get anything. So I, we had to, I had to deal with, you know, all of that. My family had to deal with all of that. You know, the fact that um, you had no, um, that I say, a sense of closure as regards that. But with that word, I went back to my family and I said, this is what God showed me. And the truth is, the apostles in our time, in their time, you know, some of them were crucified upside down, some of them were sawn in half, some of them were fed to lions and other animals, some of them were abandoned for good. That, my mom's um, death and passing reminded me clearly of the fact that you can walk with God, you can be with God, but the truth is all flesh is grass and all flesh truly returns to where it came from. The most important thing is that um, the Lord himself calls his beloved home. And the word of God in Isaiah 57 verses 1 to 2 showed me, um, God expressly showed me that the righteous are taken away. They are taken away from the evil that is to come. So um, the circumstances might not have been palatable. The circumstances of her passing might not have been fantastic. But I have the assurance that she is with the Lord. Now that taught me more and showed me more that um, it doesn't matter how the saint goes home. The most important thing is that the saint is home. Yeah.